Hi all, welcome back to our series on getting started with .NET package management using NuGet. Today, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about some security features that are available in NuGet and how you can use them to monitor your project to make sure that everything is safe and secure. It's really important to the NuGet team that our customers are aware of the security features that we have, as well as potential threats to their code to make sure that everything is safe and secure in our ecosystem. So let's get started with staying secure with NuGet. I'm gonna start by setting some context here. And to do that, I want you to think of it this way. We, as open source developers, download code from the internet, written by unknown individuals that we haven't read, that we execute with full permissions on our trusted devices where we keep our most important data. Sounds a little scary, right? It's a miracle that this all works. There are a lot of things that can go wrong in this process, which is where NuGet comes in. NuGet serves as not only a way for developers like yourselves to browse and install open source packages to make your coding lives easier and introduce new ways of solving a problem, but NuGet also most importantly serves to regulate, protect, and safeguard the most important data of our customers. Balancing this with creating the most simple and intuitive design possible to streamline package authoring and consumption for our users is what NuGet strives to accomplish. Let's talk a little bit more about some of the common attack vectors that malicious actors use to take advantage of open source software. First is typo squatting. Typo squatting is a malicious practice in which someone registers a package with a name that closely resembles a legitimate NuGet package, often by making a slight typographical error or using a similar sounding name. The intention behind typo squatting is to trick developers into accidentally installing the fake package which can have serious consequences. Prefix reservation is the solution that NuGet has in place to combat this issue. It's like reserving your own land on NuGet and ensures that the package owner and your package ID cannot be exploited or used by anyone else. Each request is individually reviewed by the NuGet team. To learn more about the process and request prefix reservation for your package, be sure to check out the link in the description. Next is a concept called dependency confusion. This is a type of software supply chain attack that exploits the trust that developers have in public packaging repositories. In this attack, a malicious actor publishes a fake package to a public repository with the same name as a legitimate package that might be on a private repository. When a developer's build system tries to download the legitimate package, it can unintentionally download the malicious package instead. This can happen if the developer's build system is configured to first check the private internal repository. And if the package isn't found there, then it will check the public repository. The malicious package could contain malicious code that can compromise the security of the developer's system or steal sensitive information. However, NuGet has a lot of checks in place that can prevent this from happening. Package source mapping is a feature that NuGet serves to protect our customers from this issue. Package source mapping gives you fine-grained control of where your packages are coming from by mapping every package in your solution to a target source. NuGet's solution for safeguarding your software supply chain and protecting against dependency confusion so you always know where your packages are coming from is package source mapping. An example provided here shows you how package source mapping works in your NuGet.config file, which is found in the root of your repository. As you can see, it details a package and maps it to an exact source so that you have confidence that you're getting the exact package you're looking for every time and not installing malware that can compromise your security. To learn about how to onboard your solutions to package source mapping, definitely be sure to check out the links in the description. Lastly, malicious actors can try to hack into accounts the old fashioned way. I'm sure many of you have dealt with or know someone who has dealt with a social media account being hacked into. I know it's happened to me. Thankfully, NuGet has implemented mandatory two-factor authentication, which adds a second layer of protection for NuGet accounts in addition to just a password. This prevents against NuGet accounts being hacked and ensures that NuGet packages cannot be tampered with by anyone but the actual listed package owner. So. Now let's talk a little bit about how you can actually monitor your dependencies in your projects to maintain security and what to do if a package that you're using has a vulnerability. NuGet makes it really easy to find out about any security vulnerabilities that might be in your projects. This is all thanks to the NuGet restore command. The restore command automatically runs when you do a common package operation, such as loading a project for the first time, adding a new package, updating a package version, or removing a package from your project in your favorite IDE. 
You can also manually type .NET Restore into the terminal window at any time to run the restore command. During this process, a description of your dependencies is checked against a report of known vulnerabilities in the GitHub Advisory database. This will produce a report of security vulnerabilities with the affected package name, the security or the severity of the vulnerability, and a link to the advisory for more details. If a security vulnerability is found, but there are updates available to the package which remediate this vulnerability, you can edit the csproj file to manually update the package, use the NuGet Package Manager interface in Visual Studio, if that's your IDE, to update the individual package, or you can run .NET add package command, which will automatically update to the latest version with the bug fix. Now, if a security vulnerability is found, but there are no updates available to the package which can remediate this vulnerability, there are a few things you can do. First, you can check for any mitigating factors. Review the security advisory for any mitigating factors that may allow you to continue using the package with the vulnerability. The vulnerability may only exist when the code is used on a specific framework or operating system, or when a special function is called, so you might be safe. Next, you could also use a suggested package as a replacement. In the case that a security advisory is reported for the package that you're using, and the package is marked as deprecated or seemed abandoned, consider using any suggested alternate package that the package author has declared, or a package comprising of similar, function similar functionality that is maintained. Additionally, you could also contribute a fix. If a fix does not exist in the security advisory, you may want to suggest changes that address the vulnerability on a pull request on the package's open repository or contact the author through the contact owner section on the nougat.org package detail page. Lastly, if you don't want to fix the vulnerability or you're unable to update or replace the package, you can also open an issue in the package's issue tracker or preferred contact method. On nougat.org, you can navigate to the package details page and pick report package, which will guide you through how to get in touch with a package author. In this video, we talked a little bit about some of the features that NuGet has in place to help safeguard and protect your code. We also talked a little bit about some specific ways that attackers can try to manipulate and take advantage of the trust that users have in NuGet. However, the NuGet team is always hard at work trying to stay ahead of these attackers. And we also talked a little bit about what you can do if a package in your product has a vulnerability. So thanks so much for watching this series on getting started with .NET package management using NuGet, and happy coding.